Welcome back to Seopolis 2. This should be episode 11. Uh, unless I've completely got that wrong. And time to catch up on what I've been doing off camera. Finish this uh, solar cooker setup. So that's now complete. I've done a lot of prep work for laser IO. So these recipes are all ready. So I'm going to collect these ones now. So to get started with laser IO, you need the raw logic chips. And what you have to do with these raw logic chips is to furnace them. So we shall start two stacks going there. I shall put a further stack in here and just top that up. And then um, for the last stack, I'm going to have to keep hold of those because I haven't got another furnace. So what happens is this recipe here is waiting for the cooked version of the logic tip in the middle. And then so is this recipe and so is this recipe. So when they're done, that should hopefully do that. What I also did off camera was move these cold, um, what are they, chunks? What are they called? What are these? Gold pieces. From this storage row here. To one on the end and run a pipe all the way around here so it joins up with this system so they are now crafted and then smelted i've started to prep work for our mystical agricultural botany pot farm so what we have here are four rows of single stack not single stack but single item drawers with elite hopper botany pots on the top so that was a lot of clay so for that i created the clay machine now i'm going to show you something now that i found with hoppers and these click machines now last episode i put a hopper here now it was a normal iron hopper like this one and what i found was that while items were dropping into the hopper, they would continue and go through into the click machine. But as soon as this hopper gets full, so we'll have to wait a bit for that last bit, let's just take that. As soon as this hopper got full and no more items were passing into it, this stopped accepting any more. As you can see there, it's counting down and it's not going back up. So I don't know what changes the vanilla hopper um behavior but if you're using vanilla hoppers um i don't know whether they're it's just the click machine or whether it's going to be everything uh that's quite weird and if i take a stack out and you'll see there they're dropping back in now then they will drop into the one below but like i said as soon as this filled up this stopped accepting items from the hopper above and that was the reason why I took that hopper out of there and replaced it with a cable which I don't have. Where did the cable go? That would have sucked it up, put it into here. Uh, but it can't go in there. Where did the where did where did it go? Ah, hiding behind the back. So yeah, that was the reason um, why I replaced that single piece of pipe um, or replaced the hopper with the single piece of pipe. It's very weird behaviour. The pipe works fine. So I don't know about that. I really don't. Uh, this system, I've only just primed it with more redstone. It's completely empty all the way along. Now then, our coral setup and colourful. I've actually stopped, uh, pulled all the dust out of here. So these are no longer creating salt which means that they're no longer creating coral. Now there's three and a half thousand fire coral in there and four and a half thousand horn coral in there, still to process in these. And we've still got hundreds and in case of the tube coral there, 2,200 and still hundreds in there because I've created a new bottleneck. We added the pulverizer last time because we weren't pulverizing enough coral. Now, We've got too much 
um, colour transformation powder for this process here. <laughs> so, you know, it's all a balancing act. So that's the reason why I've pulled the salt out of that. So all this will empty out and then it will catch up. Now, I've altered this slightly as well. Um, what was actually happening when we were pulling the colourful organic fluid straight into that stone barrel and this was emptying because this process was going so fast and we had no colourful left over for that process up there. So instead of pulling out of these tanks, we pull out of the, um, the colourful out of these three barrels into here. Uh, sorry, it pulls the skulking out. Why has that got... Oh yeah, that's converted, that's all. Yeah. Um, so it slows that process down, which of course has the knock-on effect of that not processing as much. But it is what it is. Um, yeah, that's fine. And I believe that's all I've done off camera. I don't think I've done anything else. I did pull the mob slaughter factory out of the mob farm and put the plates back in. Now, I don't know whether I did that last episode or whether it's this one. So I've gone back basically to these player damage plates. Now we've got enough pink slime for now. Um, we're going to leave this all in here because I'm going to show you how to filter it using laser IO and all that jazz. So uh, let's get cracking. Um, one thing I have done is created a load of sea lanterns and as a um, consequence of that we've now got the sea lantern quest complete. And I thought, oh, we just need an emerald mesh and that one's complete. So let's go back to, um, where are we? Where are we? We're going to be working on mystical agriculture. And we're going to be doing a lot with laser I.O. Now, before we can do anything with laser I.O., we need these things to cook. Oh, wow, they cook quick. Oh, OK, so they obviously don't take that long. No, they don't. Right, OK. So these are laser connectors. Now, uh, actually, it's the laser connector, I think, that goes in one of these. Uh, that one, I think. Let's just have a quick look. Yeah, that's for item cards. So you'll notice there that's half a stack, not a full stack. So I'll leave that half a stack of logic chips in there. And we will create a stack of laser connectors. Now, we're going to leave laser connectors and we are going to need the laser nodes so we'll make 32 of those as well and we still have um, 32 logic chips there and another stack of them here being cooked up so that's going to give us enough to keep going for now um, one thing we do need though with laser io is the wrench this this boy here the laser wrench so just three iron And we are going to need some filters. And there is four filters in there. I don't think we're going to need that many filters, but we are going to need some. Uh, the basic filters, so that's iron bars, uh, these things. So I'll leave that recipe in there and we'll pull them out as and when we need. And I'll just pop those in there. So that's all good. Right, so where do we go from here? Mystical agriculture. Or agriculture. So you needed to get on to the nether um, colourful liquid that we got last time. And then simply going to pull a load of these inferior essence out of here. Uh, that's too money. Like so. And we're going to put four of these in like that now i'm also going to need a couple of diamonds and some of the shard things these here prosperity shards now we've got quite a lot of those so that's good i'll bring an extra stack with me back so let's follow the quest line so the first thing we need here is it's prosperity gemstone which is just a diamond and then four of the shards and we're going to create two of these. Uh, but we're only going to make one 
uh, of the infer Inferium Infusion Crystals. So straightforward recipe, like so, and then you take that, uh, let's just pull it in inventory, otherwise the quest won't, won't complete. Um, <clears throat> with four Inferium Essence and four more shards to create the Infusion Stone, uh, not that one, that one. And then with the infusion stone, we can then turn a load of these into the next tier up. So that unlocks that quest, which unlocks that quest. And then the final quest here is the Prudentium infusion crystal, which is the Inferium one in the middle, and then four of the Prudentiums and the Prosperity shards on the outside. like so we'll just put some of these in here and convert them let's get rid of that hopper yeah keep an eye on your hoppers people right so that completes that bottom section there um we'll come back to seeds uh, oh that's the point do i actually have any seeds oh now then now then now then if you like me do not have any seeds now seeds can be found in the wrecks which are on the ocean floor i have not seen any around me but then again i haven't been looking for them let me just sleep and then i'll see if i can see a sunken ship because they tend to have seeds in them but i'm pretty sure i have not seen a sunken ship anywhere around this base at all Gonna have to come up for air shortly. Ah, there's one right here, look. Now, if you find these ships, there's a good chance you can find seeds on these ships. Um, it's usually a doorway there. And I don't have any... Uh, and this is why we brought torches, so we can just spam the torches just here and that should fill our air back up. Uh, oh, there is a door here. All right, so the door is actually underneath. All right, no. Oh, that's a shame. Um, in this chest? Oh. Yeah, lots of items, but no seeds, fortunately. But you can find them on this particular uh, boat. There's all my torches coming up here. No. Nope. No more of that. So there is another choice for seeds uh, besides the sunken wrecks that I didn't manage to find one on. And that is to make a market. So you can buy the market. Uh, you can make the market, sorry. Um, you just need one of the Invar Constantin alloys. And we'll not send him to the uh, sea. <laughs> Seopolis Steve Seeds and Feeds. Now you should find in here, look, we've got wheat seeds here, but and it needs bee books, not emeralds. So we can just grab some bee books. Uh, where did I put them? In this chest, maybe? There, I was blind. So yeah, you can buy seeds from here. Uh, we'll take six initially, and what we shall do is we shall change something in here for the seeds. What don't we need any more of these seagrass, I reckon. We can do without that. So what I'll do is I'll just break that, move it down a bit, make another one, unless we've already got some, which we haven't. Uh, it could have been done with being a double draw, but... Um, single should be okay because it's going to give more wheat than seeds oh so farmland is slightly quicker than dirt but i mean that's you know either neither there really 
0 0.05 so we'll put some seeds in there and that can be duplicated and meanwhile we've got five here to be working with so let's pick all this back up so what we need to do now is turn these seeds into the prosperity seeds And then look back at our quest. Now, refined storage, as I said in the last episode, is optional. Uh, but we do have to work to silicon. You have to get to this silicon part here. The rest is optional. Well, for now it's optional. Um, but you do need silicon. So we are going to have to work down this tree. And we could do that now. So prosperity ingot is next. And that's just a nine ingot and four of these shards. Gives us a bit of inventory space. And that gives you four more. So you can break that down to nuggets. Uh, so now we can make the fluid encapsulator. Now this has other uses within the factory as well. In making the recipes cheaper for our um, transformation powder. And that's our fluid encapsulator, which we will put on the end just here. Right, so how do we make uh, silicon? Let's just break one of these into um, nuggets. And then that will unlock that one. And we can oh, pin that by mistake. And then we can now make these silicon so this is made from molten silicon and prosperity nuggets now you might think well how can we make molten silicon when we haven't got any silicon yet well the way to make that is this recipe not that recipe um is in the magma crucible look you can melt so you can smelt sandstone so in fact what we'll do is this is the magma crucible here We'll break those two pipes and we'll put the fluid encapsulator over here instead. And let's just move that sink out of the way because we don't want water going into our systems instead. So sandstone. So all you've got to do is take a couple of stacks of sand. Uh, in fact, does K work? Oh no, K puts them into... That's interesting. K puts them into a compressed block instead of four. Oh well, that's new name there. Right then, so we can melt sandstone. That gives our liquid silicon or molten silicon, and we need to put that in the fluid encapsulator. So let's just—I've got fluid pipes here on me. They're not going to connect to the front. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just move this because that smithing table doesn't actually use power. And we don't want it connecting to that either. One more pipe needed. And then we set this side to output. This side to input. And then shift right click to wrench it and then that transfers the molten silicon over and we put prosperity nuggets in here and that gives us silicon now are we good we are going to require quite a bit of silicon and we need silicon basically for this crafting recipe here to make the dimensional shards and we need the dimensional shards to make well, both the infused diamond and the infused ender pearl. So the infused diamond makes this infused ender block, and the infused ender block is what we convert, used to convert the nether organic fluid into ender organic fluid. So that's one of the reasons why we need it. Um, the other reason why we need dimensional shards is um, to get into flux networks but not just flux ne flux network networks there is this infused ender pearl which i believe you smelt into 
resonant ender and we used that to create the endstone pebbles to make endstone which we're going to need as well so yeah we're going to need quite a bit of that so let's see that's put more in there right so we can collect the quest that's our silicon we don't need to go any further just now um may get into refined storage off camera and these are pretty straightforward recipes so i may come back in an episode where i've just got refined storage everywhere i don't know if we're going to record that yet or not because i mean everybody's done refined storage um it's pretty straightforward in this pack as well so dimensional shard unlock here requires um the infusion altar so we've done the silicon we just did that so we need the infusion altar now and that has a dependency of that and tertium 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 i'm going to call it tertium and the way we create that is we take our prudentium infusion crystal and some prudentium and that creates the tertium now these crystals are specific to the tier that you're working on so like you can't take the inferium one to make the next tier above that so you need these are tiered so the tiered until you get to the master crystal which is the one that flashes this one here but we're quite a long way off that we need a lot more insane essence before we can get up to that far um, but this one here is unlimited uses and, and can be used in all the recipes otherwise all the other ones are actually tiered so well let's create 16 of those and then that will unlock this quest line and the first thing we need to do is go downwards and create the infusion altar which is pretty straightforward uh, you can use any stone here if I just take a stack of, stack of stone and we need some gold you only need one infusion altar but you do need four of the infusion pedestals now normally you would make eight but only make four because that then unlocks the quest which gives you another four so we can collect that and then the bottom one look gives you four more so that's the eight that you need for the infusion altar now if you're wondering how to position these uh, if you simply place down the infusion altar anywhere you'll see shadows of where the pedestals need to go so don't worry about that about placing them in the wrong place uh, we're going to create another area just behind where those um, botany pots are and the storage drawers that are created and we're going to do a new area for our um, pedestal and infusion altars. Now I want to switch to using sea lanterns for our light lights. So um, I'm going to start off by putting the, these are going to be in a bit of awkward layout because they um, this is not like even evenly spaced. So they're going to be rather peculiar. Rather than have I could put four around that, I, I guess might work out better but once you play these and break them unless you've got silk touch they'll break back into the uh, actual prismarine bits 
Right then, so that's the layout that we're going to use just here. We don't need a big area. But now what we're going to do is we're going to break all the blocks below the pedestals. And then break the block which is below the infusion altar. Now I'll show you why we're doing this in a minute too. Uh, let's see, where's the middle one? Is it that one? Looks like it. Yeah. So let's pick all our blocks up. Is that all of them? Yeah. Right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our laser nodes and place them underneath each one of the pedestals. Now, don't click on the pedestal, it'll put it on it. Just put them underneath by clicking on the side of the block. And you want one under the center infusion altar as well. Now, it's a bit unfortunate you can see these through, but it is what it is. And then we're going to want a chest. And now the chest, the closer you place it, the better. Um, you're wanting to be within eight blocks of the furthest away um, laser node. So if I was to place it just, uh, let's see, um, where should we place it? Just here. So place another laser, laser node there along with a chest. And that should be okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to link them all together. Now, linking is done with the laser wrench. Um, what you can do is, you don't. there's no right and wrong way of doing this. I mean, you could create, if you shift um, right click, by the way, on the, ta on the first one, and then you right click on the second, it draws a red line. Can you see there? Now, there's, there's, I mean, I could just connect them all in a circle and then connect the middle one to any one of the outside. Or I could just simply connect them all to this block here. There's, like I said, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. No, did we do that one? Yes, we did. Now, be careful not to do them twice, because if you click on it again, uh, you'll see the red line disappears. Now, that one's a difficult one to do it with. Though. So, if I choose this one, see the red line goes, comes back. And the reason that red one didn't go is because, obviously, that one is in line. And don't forget the middle one, which I'm going to have to go underneath for. Right, so they're now all connected. And what do we do with them? Well, we've got the shard recipe to look at. Um, the dimensional shard recipe. This is what we're going to be doing. Okay, so what we're going to need now is we're going to need 10 filters. Yes, it's 10 filters. So 10 of these. And of course, I only put enough stuff in for eight. And we're going to need, now I don't think they stack, no they don't, so don't shift click all these at once and fill your inventory up. I'm going to need more of these. Right, 12 should do fine. Um, and then a little bit of an inventory tidy. And then what we need to do is we need to get one of every one of these for the recipe. What we need to do is we need to tell this node here to pull the items out of this chest. So we're going to do that last because we don't want stuff just to go willy nilly anywhere on any of these. So what we need to do for each one of these nodes here is take a basic uh, filter and put one of the items, only one. And then put that in uh, an item card so it's filtered. Now we want to set these to insert so they insert into the fusion pedestals. 
and simply right click the top and you'll know if you've done it right because of two things one is you'll have this laser that appears and the second thing is the direction of the particles which are going along the line should be going into the infusion pedestal now it's not very easy to tell looking at it like that but if you look at it from a distance and press z for zoom you'll see that they're going up it'd be quite apparent if you did it wrong because the particles do go you know the other way quite uh, quite badly so we'll take our next one and our next item card pop that in there and pop that on top of that one and then rinse and repeat for all the ones going all the way around for each individual item within the recipe and be sure to right click it into the top don't click it into the sides uh, which one was that that was emerald And for the pedestal, oh, so that if, for the infusion altar in the middle, we want to create another one with the echo shards, which is the middle item in the recipe. And that wants to go into an insert card as well. Now, to get into the one underneath, you, you could break the infusion altar on the top and do it, but all you need to do is with an empty hand, right click and then on the up side put the card in and you'll notice on all of these ones here it's there on the up side as well now we want um, two cards in here so in this one here we want one card not two as I've just said um, we want a straightforward extraction so we need to change that from insert to extract um, and then make sure it goes in the top now if we can look at the particles you'll see what I mean about them going in the other direction so there you see they're going down into the node whereas these ones here are going up into the pedestals so any item we put in here now will appear on the pedestal that we've configured it for so this one here if you right click on the card it brings this screen up you'll see that the glowstone is actually there so we'll pinch that back and then if you put the echo shards in there it should appear on the middle but it can't place oh it can place it um, what we do need for this middle one is a redstone clock because it needs a redstone signal to be able to fire off so i think we've got some spare yeah we have so we'll just take the standard redstone clock we've used previously put that at the side of the infusion altar and i'm going to put it back side over here so it's not in the way now what we need on the node under here is an extraction for the finished item uh, but before we can do that we need to make one because we don't have one yet and um, we don't need to make one sorry i was wrong because you can actually drag them from jei i believe so if i drag that into there yeah and this will be an extract because we're pull, pulling out and i'll put the card in there so it extra, extracts the dimensional shard and then we need an insert on this one here now what we're going to do with the extraction one is change the channel to channel one and on the insert card for the chest we change to channel one so we can put that into the top of there and you can see now just that it has an insert on orange even changes the color of the the line 
and we have an extract on white. So we just need to put this one on the upside in there. Now just to test that it doesn't extract anything else, I'll just put I don't know, that on top. And you'll see it doesn't go anywhere. So to fire this off, um, I'm going to put one of everything in. And that should put each one on the pedestal. Unless I've done something horribly wrong. Followed by the shard, lastly on the dimension altar, and then the, when the redstone clock kicks in like it just did, that will produce the dimensional shards, and they should be extracted and put back into this chest. And they are not. So I've done something wrong there. What did I do wrong? So we extract dimensional shards into orange. And this has an insert orange. So that should work. Why is it not working? Oh. Oh, I've put the... How did that... What? How did that get... Did I put it in the wrong place? I'll put it on the wrong one. Right, okay. I didn't I didn't put it under the in the infusion altar, I put it in the uh in the pedestal, so let's put it in the infusion this one here. That's why it didn't work. So now those dimensional shards should be extracted off there and put it back in this chest. And because all this is filtered, these dimensional shards have nowhere else to go on this small network. Right, so what we can do now is I've only 38 silicon, so I need to make some more silicon. Now I'm going to need a few of these dimensional shards. Six is nowhere near enough. Did we finish making our more silicon? Right, so we've got a stack there. So that, that will do nicely, and we'll take a stack of all the others. Uh, another tip, when you're putting them in this chest, always put the echo shards last. The order of the rest doesn't really matter. Because it will take one and then move to the next one. And what we can do here is on the extract, this one, um, this I've actually made slower, not quicker. So we want to change that back to 20. And you'll see they're put on a lot quicker. <laughs> And you'll see they're actually filling the pedal stills up while the six dimensional shards are pulled off the middle. And if you time it perfectly good, it can run non-stop. And we can speed up the extract here, um, or the transfer amount. If we change that to six, it will pull them all off at once. So we'll wait for the next ones to do. And then all six dimensional shards should get pulled off and put in the chest all at the same time. And there we have it. So we'll leave that running. Uh, I'll steal those because I think we need them for the next quests. These ones will complete themselves as we're doing seeds. Uh, but this is what we need to concentrate on. And this is the... Um, which one are we on? Dimensional shards one? Yeah. So we'll leave that running. Uh, there's no way it can go wrong. Uh, because, like I said, all these pedestals are filtered, including the middle one, so it can't put stuff in the wrong place. You can't put more than one item at a time on these pedestals, so you don't need to specify anything with the quantities. Um, it will just work it out itself and then do it all hands-free. So, where do we go from here? Well, we're going to go down this tree here. With this is the transformation powder that we need to go to the next one. Now, there's gilded blocks, portal blocks here, and going upwards. 
I see a lot of discussion on Discord about this particular dimension. It, it's actually a dungeon dimension. As far as I'm aware, there is no real need to go in here. Uh, we might have an excursion one day just to show everybody what, what it's like. But as far as I'm aware, this is just a side thing with exploration. I'm not sure it gives you actually anything. There may be something under the CC6 that is needed from that dungeon, maybe. Like that. So if you're going to complete the CC6 uh, here, you will need to go into that dimension. I don't think these have crafting recipes. No, they don't. So you'll need to go in and at least get the portal crown blocks to complete that chapter. Uh, but other than that, I don't think there's a reason to go actually go in there. Uh, where are we? Dimensional shards. So let's see how far we get down here. Um, I'll notice we're pushed for time. So infused ender pearl, infused diamonds are next. And that's just a diamond surrounded by and a ender pearl surrounded by. So we'll get those. And I think we're probably going to need more than one, but we'll just do one to get the quests out of the way. So that's those two. Oh, we're given a second one there and a second one there. So endstone pebbles. So this, as I said before, you know, we need a resident ender and to get resident ender, you melt these infused pearls. Now, have we still got, we don't have molten silicon in there. So we can do that and melt those. Now this takes looks like any pebble and it's 10 millibuckets per pebble so that, that can do quite a lot so we'll take stone pebbles a couple of stacks and we'll put them in there and they will get converted to these end stoned pebbles so i'll take four of those even though it's just chucked an extra one at me and then craft those into the block which should get through the next couple of quests uh, we need to crush one to get crushed end stone. Now we can do that manually for the time being just to get the quest out of the way because we're going to automate all this. So there's the crushed end stone. And then to get the transformation powder here, we sieve the crushed end stone and notice it needs the emerald mesh or a netherite one. We can make netherite. We could upgrade all these meshes to netherite quite easily um, because we've got the netherite scrap there that came through when we started doing the nether stuff. Right, did that melt both of those? It did. Well, let's do two more. We don't have enough shards to do two. It's probably two or enough to make a few more in this chest up here that's that's been manually running or automatically running you mean probably loads in here yeah loads not sure we're going to need this many shards by the way doing a stack is probably all you're ever going to need right so we can't do that just yet now to infuse the end block we need five blocks and then two two of these diamond infused pearls and two uh, um ender pearl infused pearls do it that way and I guess that block so this block here is what we use to convert or transform the nether organic fluid into ender organic fluid and the ender organic fluid is what we dunk the ender transformation powder in to get the ender organic matter and the ender organic matter is what we sieve and we do need a netherite mesh for this process and here we get platinum, uranium, lead, and then two uh, of the end things, shulker shells and chorus fruit. Now, chorus fruit, you can actually stick in a botany pot to, to get more. So that's something that we will be doing. Let's see. Now, end stone, you can actually make with mystical agriculture look. So you can remove the need to make endstone like we've just made in uh, using uh, the pebbles and then resin ender and the, these pebbles. 
so you can remove that need but and it is a big but to get these end essence you need end seeds and the end seeds require imperium essence and this end and agglomeratio this is not the the powder that we were looking at before it's different so this actually needs chorus fruit and purple blocks to make and you need to make four of these so you need to get chorus fruit before you can actually make the mystical agricultural seeds so you're going to need some processed manually yeah so obviously it doesn't crush the compressed block so what we do with these crushed end stone is we need to sieve them in an emerald mesh And there's our emerald mesh and that completes the colourful chapter all the way up here. So to um, sieve these we require an emerald mesh or a netherite one. Um, we haven't got around to making the netherite yet. And that's made in the smithing table actually. Different recipe entirely. Right, um, seeing as we're going to be uh, kind of skipping making the end stone how it should be made, uh, I'm going to temporarily put this flux sieve up here. Now the flu flux sieve outputs underneath. I'm going to put it just here because, like I said, it's temporary. And we'll put the crushed end stone under there. And that should give us the transformation powder. Oh, I can put the sieve in. Uh, did we crash? I'm frozen. Oh. 